Okay, so welcome to this webinar on uh, crash worthiness. So we'll be learning about uh, how to perform the vehicle crash test. That means how the vehicle crash crash tests have been performed in the industries, and we'll also perform a short uh, uh, simulation on the crash worthiness. I'll be doing the simulation in hind and you can say HyperWorks, the industry leading uh, simulation tool for crash analysis and also for uh, various other types of designs most of the things are done in hypermes or hyperworks desktop and this is also used but mostly uh, you can say now as this industries are moving towards hyperworks because of its robust uh, software means platform okay so without any delay so we'll be starting on with the session on crash worthiness okay. so first is what is crash worthiness the term crash worthiness was first started in the aerospace industry in the early 1950s. The term crash worthiness provided a measure of the ability of the structure and any of its components to protect the occupants in survival crashes. That means in crash worthiness, generally we find out the values in which you can say a certain type of a certain type of injury will occur to the passenger, okay, as, as well as the certain type of uh, you can say failure that will occur in the structures. Okay, crash worthiness means what you can say how much the vehicle is worthy if there is a crash. That is crash worthiness. Okay. How much the vehicle is worthy if there is a crash. Okay, that means you can say how the structure will be failing in crash and also how the passengers will be, or you can say what will be the safety of the passenger when there is a crash. Similarly, in the automotive industry, crash worthiness connotates a measure of the vehicle's structural ability to plastically deform and yet maintain a sufficient survival space for its occupant in crash involving reasonable deacceleration loads. So in automotive industry, crash worthiness means, you can say, the vehicle's structural ability to plastically deform. To plastically deform means there are various modes of deformation. While deformation, we can go for two physical properties of any material. Not physical properties to physical features of any material not properties sorry physical features of any material those are the toughness and resilience how much the tough how much tough a material is and how much resilient the material is toughness means how much energy it can you can say absorb without deforming that is toughness toughness means how much energy a material can absorb without deforming and resilience means how much energy the material can dissipate by deforming. Resilience of the body means how much the body or how much the material can, you can say, disperse the energy by deforming. So by maintaining a ratio between these two, we can very we can design very good structures okay, so to withstand the crash. Okay. Then restraining systems and occupant packaging can provide additional protection to reduce several injuries and fatalities. Sorry, fatalities, crash worthiness evaluation is ascertained by a combination of test and analytical methods. Okay, so let us see. In crash worthiness, the vehicle's crash worthiness and occupant safety remains the most important and challenging design consideration in the automotive industry. Early in the history of vehicle structural development, vehicle bodies were manufactured from wood and goal of crash worthiness was to avoid vehicle deformation as much as possible. That means in the previous eras, Mostly the vehicles are designed so that the vehicles are very designed, you can say, towards toughness. The vehicles are very tough. That means the vehicle won't be deforming. You may be thrown out of the vehicle, but the vehicle won't be deforming that much. Okay. Previously, hello, my voice is not audible. Hello. Audible, sir. Audible, audible. Okay. Audible, sir. Okay. So you can say, previously the vehicles were designed in the sense on the side of toughness toughness means you can say there will be a crash the passenger may be thrown out of the vehicle but the vehicle won't be deforming like your ambassador ambassador you have seen that vehicle is very tough but that vehicle is not good in if there is a crash is a head on a front, head on crash okay it is very tough but if there is a head on crash the vehicle will not be damaged but the passenger will be thrown out of the vehicle okay the passenger may hit any other part of the vehicle and it may you can say injure itself. Why? Because since the body is not deforming, all the energy you can say is now will be you can say it is available to the passenger. 
Okay. When the body deforms, it absorbs the energy of the gas. So the passengers will be safe. There will be no acceleration of the passengers. It is just like a pseudo force. If you are, you can, let's say, uh, you can say, we call it as momentum transfer. You can say as momentum transfer. Okay. When the vehicle, if the energy is not dissipated by the body, then that much amount of energy is now available for the passenger. The passenger will now accelerate with that much amount of energy of the crash. So the passenger will be thrown out of the vehicle really or it may that. hit any other structure and injure itself. And but if the vehicle that. deforms, okay. If the vehicle deforms, some of the mics are on, please, if you can just uh, mute it, so it will be good. Okay. So you can say the vehicles deforms if the vehicle deforms then the energy is now dispersed by the vehicle and very less amount of energy will be available on the end of the passenger the passenger won't be accelerating okay that much so that there will be any injury over the years the body structure evolved to include progressive crust zones to absorb the part of the crust kinetic energy by plastic deformation so if we see certain bodies, let me just show you the body. You can see in here, we have various crash zones. Okay. We have various crash zones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Crash zones means, what are the crash zones? You can say, whenever there will be a crash, these zones will be deformed. And the rate at which they deform and the amount of energy that they can capture during deformation. Okay. The rate at which they deform and the amount of energy that they capture during deformation will prevent any fatal injury. Okay. Will prevent any fatal injury. At present, vehicle's body are manufactured, manufactured primarily of stamped seat panels and assembled <laughs> using various fastening techniques. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll be saying there is no problem in Hindi. Okay, so some of your mics are still on. Please, if you can mute it up. Kiskin Loka mics are on. Okay, so I'll be using both Hindi, my Hindi or English. So, we use the body. So, we have to use the body. 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 Then designers create vehicle to provide occupant protection by maintaining the integrity of the passenger compartment and by simultaneously controlling the crash deacceleration pulse to fall below the upper limit of human tolerance. We will see that how we can say the crash energy dispersion occurs so that it will not reach the human tolerance. Kese crash energy body through disperse hota hai jo hum log ka kuch hum log matlab body ka kuch human tolerance hota hai there is a certain tolerance limit okay tolerance limit means excuse me tolerance limit means certain parts of our body will undergo a certain acceleration sudden acceleration because of rate of change of momentum sorry not rate of change of momentum yes because of rate of change of momentum okay hum log ka body static hota hai par jab Crash hota hai, suddenly a velocity se wo zero jake, ka karta hai. Okay. Suddenly from a certain velocity it moves towards zero. And that is very fast. So rate of change of momentum is very high if the energy is not dis dispersed in the crash. A crash deacceleration pulse with an early peak in the time and gradually decay is more beneficial for protection of distant documents. Okay. So ka crash hota hai, to energy, you can say, hum ka gaadi ka momentum reta hai. Okay, गाड़ी का momentum रहता है. So let's say this is the energy. How the energy dissipates? Let's say energy time. So हम लोग का body का कुछ kinetic energy रहता है. This is the kinetic energy of the body. Then during crash suddenly the kinetic energy reduces. Okay. Okay. You can say when there is a crash, suddenly the kinetic energy reduces very fast when there is a crash. And because of this kinetic energy reduction, what happens? The rate of change of velocity occurs. 
ओके और द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम ऑफिस ओके क्योंकि काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज पॉजिस्ट बाय व्हेन द बॉडी हैज अ सर्टेन वेलोसिटी यस और नो जब वेलोसिटी हम लोग का सडनली जीरो हो जाता है तो रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ वेलोसिटी और इफ यू कैलकुलेट द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम इट इज वेरी हाई सो व्हाट हैपेंस सडनली देयर इज अ फोर्स ओके द फोर्स इंक्रीजेस सॉरी इस तरह से नहीं होता है suddenly there will be a force and then it will fall it will fall okay it will fall like this so this is the force acceleration force of the passengers okay hum log ka kinetic energy bahut jaldi reduce ho jata hai agar vehicle ka velocity hai let's say 60 km per hour then in just 2 to 3 seconds it becomes nearly 0 or 5 km per hour nearly 0 to 5 km per hour व्हीकल का वेलोसिटी कितना जल्दी रिड्यूस हुआ सो इफ वी कंप्यूट द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम मास मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 60 डिवाइडेड बाय द टाइम टेकन टाइम टेकन इज 2 टू 3 सेकंड्स सो द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम इज वेरी हाई ओके विद इन विद इन नॉट 2 टू 3 सेकंड्स इज आल्सो वेरी हाई विद इन अ फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकंड्स सो द रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम इज वेरी हाई एंड व्हाट इज रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मोमेंटम इट इज नथिंग बट फोर्स सो फोर्स हम लोग का बहुत जल्दी बढ़ जाता है तो इसलिए अ क्रैश डी एक्सिलेशन पल्स विथ एन अर्ली पिक इन द टाइम एंड ग्रेजुअल डिके इज मोर बेनिफिशियल सो ऐसे धीरे धीरे हम लोग का फोर्स बढ़ता है फिर ग्रेजुअली डिके कर जाता है दिस इज द बेस्ट फॉर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ रिस्ट एंड डॉक्यूमेंट्स ये अगर बॉडी में होता है इफ दिस कैनेटिक एनर्जी इज डिस्पर्स बाय द बॉडी बाय द बॉडी देन इट इज वेरी गुड हम लोग का फोर्स धीरे धीरे कम होता है फिर कम हो जाता है जब एनर्जी सडनली कम होता है तो फोर्स बढ़ जाता है बिकॉज ऑफ रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ मूवमेंटम ओके तो जब इसलिए एक तरह का एक तरह का डीएक्सिलेशन पल्स किया जाता है मतलब बॉडी को उसी हिसाब से बनाया जाता है ताकि हम लोग का डिस्पर्सन अच्छा रहे इंजीनियर्स डिजाइन एंड मैन्युफैक्चर व्हीकल बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर टू विच स्टैंड स्टैटिक एंड डायनामिक सर्विस लोड एनकाउंटर ड्यूरिंग व्हीकल लाइफ साइकिल The vehicle body provides most of the vehicle's rigidity in bending and in torsion. Vehicle body provides most of the vehicle's rigidity in bending and in torsion. In addition, it provides a specially designed occupant cell to minimize injury in the event of crash. So, its what? What is it? It is a. Uh, you can say. Uh, so, remember, I will be asking all. I will be answering all your questions. Okay, let me just end this webinar. It will be a bit long webinar, so we'll be completing it as much as as as, as fast as possible. तो हम लोग का कंपार्टमेंट इन इन आवर कैबिन ओके इन आवर कैबिन और इन आवर यू कैन से द कैबिन स्पेस इज डिजाइन इन सच ए वे ओके द कैबिन स्पेस इज डिजाइन इन सच ए वे दैट इट विल अलाउ मूवमेंट ओके रिमेंबर इट विल अलाउ द मूवमेंट बट विद इन दैट मूवमेंट देयर विल बी नो पार्ट्स दैट मे दैट दैट विल दैट द पैसेंजर विल हिट सो दैट इट मे गेट इंजर्ड यू विल सी ऑल दोस थिंग्स The vehicle body, together with the suspension, is designed to minimize road vibration and aerodynamic noise transfer to the occupant. In addition, the vehicle structure is designed to maintain its integrity and provide adequate protection in surviving crash. So, vehicle ka ham log ka kitna tarah ka manufacturing rehta hai? What are the various types of what are the various types of manufacturing? Means what are the various types of uh, ways of manufacturing bodies? First is a unibody structure, then body over frame structure. What is a unibody structure? most vehicles today are manufactured with unitized body frame known as unibody construction generally our biw body body in y we see you can say this is a unibody okay. this is a unibody there are sheet metal features and they are you can say god we we use what spot welding in order to combine this structures it is a unibody structure okay it is a unibody structure is a manufacturing process where sheet metal is bent and formed and then spot welded to create a box which makes up the structural frame and functional body of the car these vehicles have crumple zone to protect the passenger in case of a crash you need body construction yahan pe crumple zone dekhiye ye these are crumple zones these empty regions are the crumble zones jab hum log ka crash hoga so it will provide a distance matlab hum log ka distance ek hoga 
ताकि वो उतने डिस्टेंस में सारा एनर्जी डिस्पर्स हो जाए उतने डिस्टेंस में सारा एनर्जी डिस्पर्स हो जाए ऑल द एनर्जीज और मोस्ट ऑफ द एनर्जीज विल बी डिस्पर्स Yes, we can use shock absorbing things. Actually, these are shock absorbers. Okay, <clears throat> these are the shock absorbers. Remember, so one problem of shock absorber is you need a fixed support. Okay, if you want to absorb the shock, then you need a fixed support. So fixed support, if your shock is very strong, then what will happen? Then there will be the same problem. Again, there will be high amount of deacceleration. So these things they crumble. Okay, they totally crumble. and accept the energy okay we can use yes we can use different energy different material okay with greater yield yes we can use different material with greater yield to capture the energy properly shock absorbing is there in your trains you have shock absorbers you have seen but that won't help because it has to be fixed and the amount of force that is provided in here the amount will be getting the same reaction so that these parts this part should be made with very strong material then only the shock absorbing will happen or else this shock absorber will just go in into the body okay wo body ke andar chala jayega body ko pura destroy kar dega theek hai then body in frame construction most heavy duty trucks and a few premium full size cars are still manufactured with body on frame construction body means you can say there will be a frame body on frame you have seen that body on frame these are body on frame constructions okay you have seen the trucks are manufactured like this this is a frame and on this frame you have your okay truck and in here you have the wheels this is a body on frame okay it it has no uni body construction it is a body on frame construction this manufacturing process which is weight bearing frame is welded together then the engine drive line suspension the body is are bolted to the frame in accident the is uni body frame is designed to crumple and absorb the energy of the impact better than a body on frame construction the chassis frame supports the engine transmission powertrain suspension and accessories in frontal impact the frame and the front seat metals remember in frontal impact <coughs> the frame and the excuse me <coughs> in frontal impact the frame and the front seat material absorb most of the crash energy by plastic deformation the three structural modules are bolted together to form the vehicle structure so you can see sometimes these are bolted together okay. you can see in here we'll be having bolts they are bolted together to create the whole body okay. this is not you can say this this part is bolted this is one frame here it starts from here this is a complete frame and this part is bolted together remember this part is bolted okay and this front part is also bolted this front part is also bolted the vehicle body is attached to the frame by shock absorber mountings designed to isolate from high frequency vibrations uni body vehicles combine the body frame and front metal seat in a single unit constructed from stamped seat metal and assembled by spot welding yes we can use uh, hydraulic mechanism but hydraulic mechanisms are very slow okay you cannot suddenly deform a hydraulic mechanism so it will take some time and during that time obviously injury may occur okay hydraulic you can see if you use pneumatic it, they, those are much faster than hydraulic okay the construction of the unibody structure is also known as unit frame and body or frameless it is claimed to enhance the whole vehicle agility and provide weight the material most auto bodies today use stamped seat as structural members that are spot welded together to form a unitized body the unitized structure is called body in white so the way that you can see image that i have shown this is called body in white okay this is called a body in white structure bw structural members support most of the loads designed for strength fatigue resistance stiffness as well as crush load for crash worthiness then let us know about the test criteria we know what are the things that we have known you can say how the vehicle is designed 
then the different types of body constructions unibody and body on frame construction the material then finally the test criteria the motor, automotive industry crashworthiness connotes a measure of the vehicle's stability to ability to you can say plastically deform and yet maintain a sufficient survival space for its occupants Restraint system at occupant packaging can provide additional protection to reduce several injuries and fatalities. Crashworthiness evaluates is ascertained by combination of tests and analytical methods. So generally, we perform this type of analysis: frontal, side, rear, and rollover crashes. Frontal, side, rear, and rollover crashes. So first is 64 km per hour or 40 miles per hour front impact test. to access car performance in severe accident 50 km per hour or 30 miles per hour side impact test test okay then 29 km per hour 18 miles per hour pole impact test then 40 km per hour child and adult pedestrian impact test then the crash test you can say requirements for the consumer you can say connected by this federations federal motor vehicle safety standards and insurance institute of highway safety okay this is done like this okay. if i will show you a simple video of crash you can see how the vehicle is crumbling okay how the vehicle is crumbling during crash this is what it needs to happen okay this is what it needs to happen you can see it should be completely crumble itself okay and there should be a sorry okay you can see the vehicle should crumble okay it should completely the front part should completely get damaged okay you can see how it is crumbling and you can see the acceleration it has crumbled this much but there is no acceleration in the passengers okay this is a 64 km per hour test okay you can see there is no acceleration okay until this much we have reached this much amount of crumble okay this much amount of crumble has happened and after that the acceleration starts okay after that the acceleration starts okay acceleration of the passengers remember when i say acceleration it is acceleration of the passengers okay then your safety systems activates safety system means your uh, you can say uh, your uh, what are safety system okay airbag yes yes airbags sir your airbags so okay. airbags. airbags activates and you can say they again they again deaccelerate okay what is the use of airbag they provide a cushion they again what they do they reduce the rate of change of momentum okay slowly they reduce the velocity or slowly they reduce the acceleration of the passengers thereby preventing any fatal injuries okay preventing any fatal injuries okay. then the fmbss front impact requirements what are the requirements you can say same in fmbss so okay. FMVSS requirement is forty-eight kilometer per hour into a fixed barrier. This is for hybrid three in front driver and passenger seats. Use dummy injuries. Okay, you can say chest. This much amount of these are the threshold acceleration. The th chest portion should accelerate sixty g. Okay, sixty g means if the mass of the passenger is let's say hundred kilos. Okay, then one g is equal to Hundred into ten is equal to thousand newtons. Now, chest sixty Siemens sixty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sixty Siemens. Sorry, sorry. Sixty Siemens sixty multiplied by the acceleration nine point eight. This is how much? Or ten? This is six hundred newtons of load. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sixty Siemens six hundred newtons of load. HIC is thousand. HIC means the below the chest. Then femur loads. 
is 10 kilonewton. Okay, 1000 newtons and 10 kilonewton. 60 is 600 newtons. Protection must be automatic. There should be an automatic protection like airbag. Airbag is a automatic protection unit. Purpose of this test is to examine the performance of the occupant restraint system, seat belts and airbags. Okay. Seat belts and airbags. In this test, generally we examine the performance of the occupants, restraint systems and the airbag. Then IH, IIHS, Institute of Highway Safety, it says that it, okay, the front impact should be 40% offset. What should be the 40% offset? You can see in here, if I again show you this video, there is a certain offset. Okay, you can see. Okay, you can see there is a certain amount of offset. Okay. When it crashes, you can see there is a certain amount of offset. Okay. It hits with a certain amount of offset. You can see this is a offset. This is 40% offset. This test criteria is being provided by the HISS. 40% offset and 40 miles per hour. Sorry. Into deformable barriers. Okay. Male hybrid to dummy. Hybrid, these are hybrid dummies. Hybrid dummies means they are installed with various types of sensors. Okay. Hybrid dummies means they are installed with various types of sensors. Then good acceptable marginal and poor rating to access vehicles overall crash coverage. Then you can say ratings are based on dummy injury measures, structural performance, restraints, and various other things. Evaluates the structural performance of the vehicle. Okay. Evaluates the structural performance of the vehicle. Then after we have Okay, you can see this is the side crash. Okay, side crash test. This is the side crash test. Okay. You can see passenger acceleration. These red, yellow, and green zones are the active zones. Okay, that means which part will face how much amount of loads during the crash. Okay, they'll face how much amount of loads. And you can see this is pole, side impact with pole. Okay. This is side impact with pole. That means it hits a certain pole. You can see deforming, how they are deforming. Okay. Thereby preventing the or helping the passengers. Okay. At 32 km per hour. You can see there is very less amount of, not very less, okay, certain amount of injury to the passengers. And this is a full frontal test. Okay, remember, this is a full front test. That means the whole front side is getting crashed. Okay, the whole front side is getting crashed. This is a full frontal test. Okay, along with the safety, along with the you can say the seat belt testing as well as the airbag testing. The seat belt testing as well as the airbag testing. Okay, you can see how it is grumbling, grumbling. That means how it is absorbing most of the energies okay, during crumble. Okay, how it is absorbing most of the energies during crumble. Okay. Then what are the side impact requirements by M FMBSS? 
33.5 miles per hour or 54 kilometer per hour crabbed impact. A crabbed impact means this impactor is known as crabbed impact. Okay. This impactor is known as crabbed impact. Okay. This is a crab impactor. Okay. This is a crab impactor. And the impact or mass of the crab should be impact or mass of the crab should be 1367 kilos. Okay. You just SID dummy. SID means again another type of dummy in the front and rear seat that has certain type of acceleration. The dummies, they have a certain band on them. Okay. That means that will show most affected areas and least affected areas. They have a certain band on them okay, to show the most affected and least affected areas. Then TTDI, TTDI means thoracic region. Okay, the thoracic region, TTDI, TT, sorry, TTI is a thoracic, thoracic region. Okay, the acceleration of the thoracic region during side impact is 85 Gs for four door passenger cars and 90 Gs for two door, two door passenger. Pelvic acceleration should be 130 Gs. Pelvic means your thighs, your legs acceleration should be less than remember the value should be less than or equal to 85 90 gs or 130 gs then only your vehicle will get the five star rating okay for safety or good rating for safety then gr is the max rev acceleration and gs is the lowest fine acceleration if all these things are correct then your vehicle is very good for impact then hisa side impact requirement you can say 1500 kilos, then impactor shape divided from Ford front spindle, then 30 miles per hour perpendicular impact, then driver and rear passenger dummies. This would be used. Proper purpose is to represent crash type that poses greater risk to occupants and promote head protection. Okay. Just to promote head protection. Then you can say this is the crash worthiness or pedestrian crash mitigation. Mitigation means decrease of pedestrian crash okay so the bumpers we can say these heights should be such that this type of crash should occur okay india your tata nexon tata harrier they have five star ratings okay okay i h h s i i h s means institutes of internal institutes of highway safety okay i have showed you these things in the previous session Okay, IIHS is in insurance. It's an insurance institute of for highway safety. How can we drive the vehicle without driver while performing the test? You don't have to drive the vehicle. Okay, electronic accelerators are used. Okay, electronic accelerators, clutch, and brakes are used. Those are electronically actuated. You don't have to drive the vehicle. It is those are electronically actuated clutch, accelerators, and brakes, as well as electronically actuated handbrakes and gear shifters. Okay, those are all electronically actuated. A certain type of actuator is there that provides the pressure. Then this height of the bumper and this layout of the bumper should be in such a way that when it hits. The head should be hitting this region and the adult head should be hitting this region. And remember, these bumpers are built in two layer structure. All the bumpers are built in two layer structure so that there will be a crumble zone. When your head will impact, okay, when your head will, you can say, impact the bumper, it will crumple, thereby preventing any fatal injury to the pedestrians. Okay. Preventing any fatal injury to the pedestrians. Okay. So what are the things that we have covered? First is, what is crash worthiness? How the vehicles are manufactured previously and how they are manufactured now to handle crash? Okay, how the kinetic energy or you can say crash deacceleration pulses are used so that we can have efficient crash. Then 
the unibody structure and body over frame structure the material that is used generally your stamped sheet metals or high strength steels and high strength aluminiums are used for biw then test criteria for frontal side rear rollover for front test these are the test criteria okay front test 64 rear test sorry side test 30 pole test 18 pre distant impact test 25 Then we have seen the crash test. Okay. Then frontal impact requirements by FMVSS. Then IIHS frontal impact requirements. Okay. You have to satisfy these requirements in your test sheet. These things should be mentioned that yes, I have performed or the vehicle has undergone the sixty-four kilometer per hour side impact test. Sorry, sixty-four kilometer per hour front impact test, fifty-four kilometer per hour side impact test, thirty kilometer per hour pole impact test. then only and what are the accelerations or what are the g's g values okay how much is the passenger you can say the thoriac g's thoriac acceleration then this g is the acceleration due to gravity 90 g means 90 times the acceleration due to gravity okay 85 g means 85 times the acceleration due to gravity 90 g means 90 times the acceleration due to gravity okay if we convert them to force then we just multiply the mass if i just write 90 g in force in force then just i have to multiply the mass mass must be by 90 multiplied by g will be the total force in newtons pelvic acceleration 130 g okay tddi where tddi is 0.5 multiplied by the gr max rib acceleration and max and lower spine acceleration in side impact then iss the impactor mass should be 1500 in fss the impactor mass should be 1300 it is 1500 okay 30 miles per hour particular nuclear test and here this is the pedestrian safety test yes all the vehicle models has to go undergo this type of test all the vehicle models will undergo this type of test then i don't think uh, we will be having the time for uh, for you to show me the crash analysis and hypermess okay no problem we will be setting up another session another webinar where we'll show you where the full webinar will be on how to perform the crash analysis using hypermess or hypercrash okay i'll be will be setting up another webinar so that i will be showing you the analysis on hypermess okay in the next webinar we'll show you how we can perform the crash analysis in our vehicles using hypermess okay so i'll be ending this uh, see your uh, okay so let me end this so i'll be ending this webinar